Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I are with our love and romance and all sorts of happiness hugging connection coach, Michelle Fabrica. <laughs> Michelle, I, I must say, uh, all of our conversations are very adult oriented, but this is a uh, a controversial topic: solo sexuality. Are we talking about masturbation here? <laughs> well, yes and no. Yeah. So basically, we think of masturbation is like you know there are all kinds of slang terms for it, right? You know, jerking off and. Um, you know, uh, I've learned a couple new ones today in researching this, you know, buff in the muffin, jack in the box, you know, <laughs> flicking the bean, you know, making the purple monkey do push ups until it gets sick. You know, I mean, there's like crazy ones out there, right? <laughs> but <laughs> I made you laugh. So, but basically, the idea behind masturbation often is getting to orgasm ASAP. Right, like that we're trying to, it's like very goal oriented. And a lot of people think of this as like, you know, you do it kind of discreetly, you have a, maybe a bit of shame and guilt rolled in there. You know, I've had people talk about when they were young, you know, getting caught, touching themselves and the parent had a certain reaction. And so, so, so there's that, right? And so I want to kind of expand it to, you know, think of it like different words for it. Like that's why solo sexuality or self pleasuring. And, um, you know, there's in Tantra, they talk about, um, you know, it's se like sexual cultivation. So it's not goal oriented. It's creating an experience with yourself. And it can involve, you know, more of a spiritual or sacred um, component to it. You know, um, breath work, even, you know, spiritual self. It's a, basically a self-pleasuring practice. So it's, it's way bigger than what we normally think of as masturbation. Okay, so you're 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 talking about um, uh, pleasuring yourself, perhaps over a long period of time, and not just uh, men, but you're talking about women as well. Uh, what what is the primary benefit of that to the individual who's practicing it? Yeah, yeah, great question. So basically, it really is about um, it's. You can think of it as like a way of expressing just self love and tenderness to yourself. It's really attending to your own body, attuning to your own pleasure. Um, there might be fantasies that come up and thoughts or feelings the way you want to feel in your body. Uh, maybe there might be some clothing that feel good to wear, maybe some something soft and silky or furry. Maybe you have like, you know, lights, certain like low lights or music. Some people have like a special playlist that they want to put on that helps them feel just, it's kind of like, um, sinking into your own body, um, enjoying the touch, um, you know, maybe you use some massage oil, things like that. So it's basically, it's tuning into the moment and enjoying the feelings of just touching yourself and, you know, not, not just your genitals, maybe your whole body, but also your genitals and to know what really pleases your body. Because a lot of us think that, you know, oh, our partner is supposed to pleasure us, but how can our partner pleasure us if we don't even know how to pleasure ourselves, how do we give them guidance on what feels good or what doesn't feel good um, or a little softer or a little um, faster or things like that? So, um, yeah. And, and of course, there are physical benefits too, like, you know, they, it you know, rel relieves pain and reduces stress and it can boost your mood and help you sleep. All right. That's a, you've made a great case. Yeah. And, and so, you know, pleasure is nourishment. It's it's really just um, it's a way to nourish our bodies that you know doesn't have any calories, and it, you know it, it's just it, it's it's really a healthy way to nourish our bodies and to love ourselves and to kind of take the the stigma away from from you know masturbation, which often that word we, a lot of us have association with that. It's kind of interesting. One of one of the things that's uh, uh, fascinating and why we enjoy speaking to you uh, just amongst the three of us. Uh, sometimes even when we're not recording an episode, we just have uh, a fun uh, talking to you because of your your uh, way of looking at things differently than most people do. Uh, but uh, we know that, uh, uh, and we appreciate the fact that you're so forthright, even in this public setting, but people have gotten into trouble 
uh, uh, for having done this in the past. So are things changing about the way we think about this? Uh, uh, because uh, in the past, it's been a problem and most people haven't even uh, brought the subject up before. Well, sure. It, it was taboo to even talk about it in public. Right. Right, right, yeah. right. And even, you know, there were things like, you know, you're going to get hair on your palms and, you know, there was all kinds of <laughs> maybe different different religions have prohibitions against it. And, um, yeah. but I mean, look at, I mean, you know, the, the porn industry is just like, you know, billion dollar industry. So, industry. so obviously people are hungry for, you know, more sexuality. And so why not, you know, help you, you know, and obviously some people are obviously masturbating while they're watching porn. And, and that can also be, you know, a way to, or, you know, their books and the different erotica, different ways to discover, you know, what really turns you on because for, you know, a lot of women in particular, um, it, it's a little different down there. Like men's anatomy, you know, male anatomy is kind of pretty straightforward and basic, but for women, some women don't know how to pleasure themselves that well. And so it, you know, uh, some women aren't having orgasms, right? So I think it's really important to, to discover your own body. And yeah, I think it is changing, but I mean, I have to admit that even this topic for me, I mean, I was thinking about, you know, Dr. Josh, Jocelyn Elders, and she was kind of controversial and she was talking about masturbation. She was a Surgeon General um, of the United States. Um, oh, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, I remember. Like, Mid-90s, I think, 93, yeah. 94. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, she was forced to resign for, you know, these some of these controversial issues around masturbation and other things, you know. Um, and so it's like, I even feel like, oh, my God, I'm going to be on the record. And talk, but, like, I, it's, it's on my, you know, I'm part of this culture, too, right? So I have that residual kind of like, oh, geez, um, is it okay to talk about? But yeah, <laughs> why not, right? Uh, well, among adults, I think, it, you know, first of all, it, it's masturbation has been around as long as there have been men and women. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, even kids, so, too. I mean, let's face it, kids are doing it. I have talked to many people. Some people start masturbating when they're like seven, Three. Oh, I remember mm -hmm. I used to ride my go kart down the hill when it was bumpy, and uh, I'd lay on my stomach. And I mean, you know, <laughs> I've heard it all, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lots of juicy, fun stories of people discovering their bodies, and it's such a beautiful thing. And um, our bodies are are here to be enjoyed as long as we can. And, and also, I think that uh, uh, our audience, uh, uh, part of what John and I are doing is we're addressing people who are living longer, healthier lives, and people. Literally, we're living 20 and 30 years longer than our grandparents, right. so to say, so that uh, it's a long time uh, to theoretically remain fallow. And uh, the fact yeah. that we're yeah. having this conversation, that it's not a one off because you, your entire practice is dealing with people with a variety of issues. But certainly this is one of them. And um, yeah. we don't we don't stop having our feelings at the age of at 50 or 55 anymore, or 60 or 62, we have them till we're 80 and, and 90 years old. So uh, we thank you, continually thank you for bringing up things for uh, that we know a lot of our audience is thinking about, and maybe just has had no way to, to express it or hear somebody that they, that they know uh, on a regular basis uh, uh, talking about these issues and these issues. So thank you very much. Yeah, I can't resist that one quick thing. Also, our bodies are changing as we get older and the way we respond. All the more reason to continually hmm. keep discovering, oh, what do I need now? What kind of stimulation or fantasy do I need now to get aroused? Because it takes longer sometimes. We're, we're not like immediately aroused, like maybe in, in when we were, you know, 15 years old. And so that's a good reason to stay connected to your sexuality. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.